In this video, let's do an interesting example where we're going to take a slightly confused entrepreneur with a slightly unorganized set of strategies, and we're going to turn that into a focused plan. We're going to turn that into a three-sentence business plan and a one-sentence business plan. And this actually comes from a real question from a real student in this course. His name is Andrew Ackner, and his business is well this is what he wrote to me and he wrote to he wrote it to me in a public course uh, message board so i took the liberty of posting it here my assumption is that he didn't mind it for me to make it public essentially you see it's a lot of ideas and i'll quickly go over it with you it's a life coaching business for people with autism perfect but now it gets confusing with life coaches who are autistic themselves that's a little confusing part of it. We'll have to make sense of it as well as athletic conditioning training program for people with autism. Okay, another wrinkle in there. Coached by athletes who are themselves autistic. Another wrinkle in there. So it's layers and layers of complexity. And okay, I also want to start, a, and this is, we're only halfway through, by the way. I only want, and then it goes on. I only want to start a podcast channel. I also want to start a podcast channel where hosts with autism talk about their life experience, inspiration, and I've been, I'm kind of going to skim, skim ahead and I've been working on the plan and I could definitely use some wisdom to make sense of all of this. Okay, so this is common. This is where you're sitting too long planning and you've got your, a lot of ideas. The ideas haven't had a chance to meet reality or you talk to a lot of people and they all say, of course, in a field like this, whenever you say, I want to help people with autism. Everybody says you're amazing. There, you know, there's very few, few people who would say something negative about it. I, I think it shows a person with a good heart. And so it's very hard for people to say, oh, bad idea. And it's easier for people to say, oh, great. So you get this false encouragement of all these ideas on top of ideas on top of ideas. But we really need focus. When we're planning a business, it's all about focus. And this is the exact, so we're pulling each other in opposite directions. This entrepreneur is getting pulled in non-focus, dist distracting with a lot of ideas on top of other ideas in, diff in slightly different directions with slight synergies. We need to add focus. Okay, so a little bit, little bit of a push and pull here, but let's try it with a three-sentence business plan. I would call this an influencer business and life coaching for autism patients. And the reason I call this an influencer is because there's already a mention of a podcast. A life coach, generally online, they do better when they make themselves into an influencer. So this part of the plan actually makes sense. This is really how it's done. In fact, I'm kind of in the same business. I don't help people with autism, but I am generally in this influencer slash coaching business where the more of a thought leader, the more of an influencer I make myself, the easier it is for me to get coaching clients. So I understand this business actually really well. I am in it, just in a different subject matter. What I did for the marketing is, I, I'm, I'm thinking, let's make this entrepreneur a real influencer in this niche and really went along the ideas that he had previously just added to it. So a podcast, YouTube channel, live events, usually influencers have books and online courses for training. And especially if, he, if Andrew wanted to train other people with autism to help others, he should he can't train them all one-on-one, -on -one, but that's why books and courses are ideal because that's a way to teach one to many. Same with the podcast, same with the YouTube channel. And of course, the revenue streams here are abundant, selling books, courses, coaching, and live event and, and tickets for to live events. I took the liberty of cutting out a lot of the stuff about the athletics and stuff about autism patients, teaching autism patients, because Really, we have to have the start to this first. We have to make the nucleus strong and successful, and then, then we can add those parts. So I took a lot of stuff out with the idea of let's grow into it. Let's start smaller, be successful there, and grow into the secondary plan. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying let's do it later. And now let's turn this into a one-page business plan. Here's the one-page business plan for the same business. It's a new business and it will help people with autism train people who are already helping people with autism to do it more efficiently. So you've got two layers, right? You're training people with autism and helping them. And of course, you're training them to help their peers 
better. So you've got two things going on here. It does add conf confusion and complexity all throughout the plan. So that part is a little hard. Now the target market is people with autism and people who want to provide extra assistance to autism patients and maybe those autism patients who are already doing something to help autism patients. So we've got, it's a slightly meta and for a person like me who's just coming into this, it's a little confusing, so bear with me. But this is actually a good example because it's really real. This is something that a new entrepreneur would create. Market size, unknown. But I am guessing the market for training autism patients to help others or to train professionals to help autism patients is outside of formal education, it would be in the tens of millions annually in North America. I could be wrong, that's my guess. The marketing plan for branding, because my feeling is that this is a heavily influencer build, uh, business, I really like to lean on all the things that make one an influencer, live events, podcasts, YouTube show, and maybe even YouTube live and Facebook live. Also, of course, very strong leads will come from search, SEO, and of course, local SEO. What I mean by local SEO is, let's say you are in Los Angeles, California. Well, people searching inside Los Angeles for people who are local to Los Angeles, it's much easier to rank and that's a tremendous market still. So sometimes, even though this is a national business, maybe even a global business, it has a strong local component to it. So I don't want to forget the local SEO. I think uh, there, there's really good clients can come from that and it's easier to get them. Other ways to promote this will be additional content creation, including books and online courses, not only for generating revenue, but also for lead generation and establishing oneself as more of a thought leader. Now let's talk about the revenue section of this business plan. It's a very profitable business because it's a one person business and all the revenue is basically just money that the entrepreneur takes home. There are costs, of course, but they are minimal compared to many other kinds of businesses. There's very little overhead. And the large sources of revenue will be selling coaching packages, selling online training, and tickets to in-person events. Smaller revenue sources will be ads, sp sponsorships, and book sales. Regarding competition, other coaches who help people with autism, uh, probably the idea of training people with autism to help people with autism is relatively fresh and new. There's not a lot of people doing that. That could be differentiation. I, I actually haven't had a conversation with Andrew. I just exchanged uh, messages online. So I don't know deeply in what the differentiation will be, but I would suggest a few things for differentiation. Degrees, years of work, unique, maybe creating some kind of a unique therapeutic approach unique training approach, uh, deep insight and care. Of course, that's really important. And uh, most life coaches, business coaches, wh where they really start succeeding is when they have proven results. Like they can show case studies. And then after these case studies, people flock. Everybody wants those results that the case studies show. And it becomes much easier to get new clients. And really, uh, customer success. That That's the ultimate differentiation but in the beginning, maybe some kind of a unique approach. The team is essentially Andrew Ackner, founder and, and CEO. I hope that this kind of a unique approach where I took an actual student's half plan and try to make it into a slightly more hashed out plan is easy, is helpful for you to maybe hash out your own plan.